Sour cream pocketbook yeast rolls are a common southern bread to make particularly during the holidays. Sometimes they require more work than I have time for. I love them so much that I created a version that's much easier and doesn't include eggs. After all, eggs are quite expensive these days and time is always of the essence. These shortcuts still produce a very surprisingly and incredibly rich, light, tangy, and fluffy roll. They truly are as quick to make as homemade biscuits. Make these for the holidays or any time of year you want homemade yeast bread without all the work. So what's great about sour cream yeast rolls? Well, they are tangy, sweet, buttery. They are a no need, mostly inactive bread since the gluten develops while sitting for hours in the fridge. We begin by making the dough eight to 24 hours before we divide and bake the rolls. The simple ingredients include yeast, granulated sugar, milk, sour cream, butter, salt, and all-purpose flour. I usually make the dough the night before. It really only takes 10 to 12 minutes. It's super quick and simple. To activate the yeast, in a two cup measuring glass or bowl, you want to add 218 milliliters of milk. I prefer whole milk as the fat adds richness and softness to the bread. Heat in the microwave for 30 seconds until the temperature reaches between 100 and 110 degrees. In a small bowl, we're going to add 14 grams, which is two packages or four and a half teaspoons of yeast. Measure out 100 grams of granulated sugar, and that is about a half a cup. From that, you're going to take one tablespoon which is about 13 grams. Add that to the yeast and give it a stir. Add about 59 milliliters, about a quarter of a cup. You could simply eyeball this and give that a stir. Set that aside for five to 10 minutes until the yeast is activated, becoming bubbly and frothy. Dice one stick of butter, which is 113 grams. Place that in the remaining milk. Dice butter makes it better melt more easily and quickly than if you had one large chunk. We're gonna add 226 grams, which is eight ounces of sour cream. Give this mixture a quick stir. We're gonna heat it in the microwave for 30 seconds to begin melting the butter and heating the sour cream and the milk. Give it a quick stir. The butter is beginning to melt, but we still have chunks of butter, so heat for another 30 seconds. Give it another stir. Still have chunks of butter. Place it in the microwave for 10 seconds in 10 second increments until all the butter is melted. All of the butter is melted. Stir in the remaining sugar and six grams, one teaspoon of salt. If you're using salted butter, if unsalted butter, use seven and a half grams, which is one and a quarter teaspoons. Stir the salt and the sugar in with the milk and butter and sour cream and set aside. To a large bowl, we're gonna add 480 grams, which is four cups of all-purpose flour. Make a well in the center of your flour. We're gonna pour in the sour cream mixture our yeast has bloomed, so go ahead and pour that in as well. Stir everything well until all the ingredients have been incorporated. This is a sticky, wet dough. You want to put this in a bowl about twice the size of the dough. If you don't have a bowl large enough, you can divide the dough into two separate bowls. The dough will rise as it sits in the refrigerator. Cover the bowl with plastic wrap. You're going to place it in the fridge for at least eight hours to overnight for a maximum of 24 hours. In the fridge it goes. Either eight hours later or the next day, we can divide and bake the rolls. So you want to prepare a pan. I'm using a nine by 13 pan and I can usually get my rolls, all of them in this one pan, but you can use a couple smaller pans if you'd like. And you're just going to grease the pan with either cooking spray or butter. Since my rolls are going to be touching the pan, I actually want that salty greasiness against the bottom and the sides of the rolls that are on the edges. So I'm going to use butter because that's the main fat in this bread. Set your pan or pans aside. This next step really only takes me about 10 minutes, 15 max. I can go even five to eight when I'm really rushing to get through it is take a look, this is the dough that's been in the refrigerator. For me, it's been in the refrigerator about uh, 12 hours or so, 12 to 14 hours. Um, and it's definitely puffed up, increased in size. So just take a spatula, kind of deflate it down, and we're gonna put it out on a floured surface. This is a sticky dough, and since it has all that butter in it, then it really um, hardened, so to speak, when it was in the fridge because that butter had a chance to solidify. 
We're not really kneading here. We're just going to shape it and you want to flatten it out to an inch thick. We don't even need a rolling pin here. You could totally just use your hands and it works just fine. Quick pet out to that one inch thick dough. I'm using a two and a half inch of diameter brisket cutter. You can use a cookie cutter, a drinking glass, whatever you have. And then all you're just gonna do is start stamping out. And notice how quickly they come right out. You just stamp and twist and they come right out. It's that simple. As you stamp them out, just place them side by side, touching in your baking pan. Like that. And the dough that we have left over that we haven't stamped out yet, just go ahead and do a quick little knead to get it all back into a smooth, cohesive dough. And then you're just gonna do the same thing. You're just gonna pat it out to one inch thick. And then just cut out the remaining rolls. And as with the others, place them in the pan. I'm gonna be able to get 15 rolls total out of this dough and all 15 will fit in my nine by 13 pan. So this really did only take me like five minutes to stamp out each of these 15 rolls. That's how quick you can get this done. So now we need to let them rise. So it is a traditional yeast bread, so they do need to rise. So we're gonna cover the pan with plastic wrap. You can cover with a towel, whatever you have. I'm gonna put mine over on the stove where it's warm and I'll have the light on. We're gonna let these sit for an hour until they've doubled in size. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees during the last 15 minutes of the rise. Remove the covering from your rolls. You're gonna place them in the oven and bake for 20 to 25 minutes until the tops and the sides are golden brown. Rolls hot out of the oven. While they're warm, I like to brush them or take some butter and then just go over the tops of each of the rolls. So a little extra butter on top keeps them soft. It adds a little appetizing shine to them and saltiness for that first bite. They're ready to eat, so you can eat them whenever you're ready. Okay, notice how easy they are to cut into. Nice and brown on the top, nice and brown on the bottom. The sides are white and fluffy. So notice the soft and light crumb. There's a little stretch, meaning the gluten developed even without kneading. There was a natural gluten development by simply leaving the dough in the fridge for hours. There you are, it's a nice, soft yeast roll. Many of us associate homemade yeast rolls with special times of the year or with a special meal, mainly because they take so much effort to make. This recipe, however, is simple enough that you can make rolls anytime you're craving a good homemade yeast bread. It's difficult to find a good recipe that takes so little active time. They work well with an elegant meal or simply eaten by themselves, hot with salted butter. Whether you make homemade bread routinely or you've never made it before but want to try, I think this recipe would work for any level of baker. Thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing. Until next time, go bake the world.